When Ryan says when it's time to begin, it's on the review but round with John Pollock and waiting the A team. That makes sense that these things we see in the ring every week on TV. It's review around for Monday night, then load a Tuesday morning from the Fight Network site. It's review around for Monday night on USA now on the John and Wei take the mic. Hello. It's John Pollock and Wei Ting, and welcome to Review a Raw. One more time. We take one Raw, and we review it. Review a Raw. It's not review the Raws. No. It's singular. singular. Yeah, only one. And only one at a time. We should yeah. review an entire season of Raw one year. <laughs> um, I don't think I'd ever do that. Start to life. stop. Could you even see yourself watching two episodes of Raw in a row? Back to back? Yeah. No, no, I couldn't. That'd not really not the current iter- iteration. Of that Raw, would take longer than three hours and 45 minutes. That's a full shift. It's a long time. Yeah. All right, well, this one Raw we chose to review was from Monday night in San Jose, California at the SAP Center, which mm-hmm. will be where Bellator takes place this Saturday. Great. Lots of stuff to do if you're in San Jose, oh, from Raw to Benson Henderson and Patricky Pitbull. Oh, okay. Roy Nelson's debut. Um, I assume Dave Meltzer might be there. Maybe. Maybe Daniel Cormier. Actually, he won't be there. Do you think he was at Raw tonight? I bet he was. Yeah? I'm sure he was. Hmm. Maybe with his recently returned light heavyweight championship. Sure. And all these wrestling fans. What belt is that? I haven't seen that one. Yeah. I thought John Jones was the champion. <laughs> <laughs> so off the top, we had a uh, memorial for Bobby the Brain Heenan, and they would feature it later. And uh, we kind of talk about this between the – there are the different levels. The tiers. There are. There are tiers yeah. for which guys get what. Yeah. And there was some criticism that Bobby the Brain Heenan, of all people, he deserved a 10-bell salute. At the top of the oh, show. Oh, you're going to get complaints no matter what. You know, short of like a full tribute episode, I feel like you always get it. My you know expectations I mean? are so low because there's been some that I've been appalled at how little they've got. That yeah. as long as they had the video, I was happy. And they had a nice video for him. Yeah, I thought I thought I was satisfied, you know, as a fan. A 10 salute, when was the last time they even did that? Other than, you know, somebody who... Piper? Was he the last did one? Did they do a 10 salute for Piper? I think so. Oh. So maybe hmm. it was... Uh, that was the last one. It's hard to say. Like, it's hard to compare these things. You know? Well, you know what? The <laughs> WWE puts themselves into the, the middle of this complaint because there's been times people have died, legendary figures that haven't even been mentioned before. I so you know what? But I think sometimes the criticism is warranted. But in, in many cases, they're, they're damned if they do, damned if they don't, you know? And, and I think a lot of it comes down to how involved that particular person was with the WWE, what kind of a legacy that person ha- held with the company itself. I'd say this one was enormous. Uh, absolutely. Bob, Bobby and, and I thought he got a very good treatment. I mean, as much as, you know, they gave somebody like a Jimmy Superfly Snuka, for instance. Wow. Different circumstances with Jimmy Snuka's death. In Afterwards, yes. After the fact. But it kind of shows you how much they considered him to be a part of the family and how in, in, entrenched he was in their history. I mean, video package in the middle, I, I thought was... Anyway, it's silly to, to compare, but I, I, I mean, short, I want to know what the process the t- is where they sit down and discuss, okay, well, how far do we go with this? Yeah. I, I, I don't believe you're going to get criticism for honoring someone. I don't think you can over honor someone, especially a legendary figure. But people are criticizing for not that, honoring enough. That's what I'm saying. I'm okay, saying, so what's, even what's if you, the backlash fine, to that? If if you, he, even if you do the ten bell salute, why didn't you do? You know, why didn't you have video uh, packages of people talking about Bobby Heenan? Why couldn't you have gone 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 further than that? I was fine with this. I was fine with it too. <laughs> yeah, if they didn't even have a video package, I feel like that would have been a little odd. And that's happened at times. Yeah. So we started off the show with Kurt Angle coming out, and he plugged the big two matches for WrestleMania this Sunday, which was pretty much what this was called. No Mercy with two WrestleMania-caliber main events is what this event should be called. It won't fit in the poster, but that's what they're calling it. Mm -hmm. He was interrupted by The Miz, who came out. No Maurice, who I guess we are not going to be seeing any longer. I, I think that would make sense. I mean, if you're if The Miz is supposed to be this responsible, you know, father... Hardly the responsible thing to do to put your wife in, in danger and to make her travel, really. So, well, yeah. Even to sell the storyline, I'm, I'm fine with Maurice not being around. 
Angle congratulates The Miz on their announcement, but did not appreciate the snide comment about me last week. Miz complains about always being an afterthought. Miz is Angle's biggest star here on Raw, and it's the second straight pay-per-view where there is not an intercontinental title match. Angle says, well, I was just about to announce something that would have an effect on you defending your title with a four-way tonight with the Hardys, Jason Jordan, and Elias. The weirdest sounding four-way ever. The Hardys, Jason Jordan, and Elias? What a weird collection of people. And the winner will face The Miz on Sunday at WrestleMania. Yep. He says that Jordan deserve, Miz doesn't think that J- Jordan deserves the chance. There's plenty people, plenty of more people that are deserving, such as Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. Miz states that Angle walked out on his responsibilities, and now everyone else here is paying for it on the roster with his, his guilt of what he's trying to make up for in Jason Jordan's life. Mm. Miz says he's going to be a better father. He's already a better champion than Angle ever was, and he can always count on Kurt Angle to be a deadbeat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Jason Jordan came out. We we know, but do we do we know if this like uh, uh, Marie's pregnancy thing is is legitimate? I have no reason to believe it's not. No, it, I, I suppose it just really conveniently played into this Jason Jordan storyline, you know, uh, hitting on on fatherhood and whatnot. I think it's just a coincidence. And I guess kudos to them for finding that connection, but really, like, convenient. Or Maurice is going to do a run-in <laughs> against all odds. And <laughs> I don't think possible. they. I don't think they would do a fake pregnancy. Oh, are you angle. sure? Are you sure? About In that? 2017, <laughs> I that that seems to be a line. I don't think they would cross. <laughs> m- making right. f- like uh, a fake pregnancy announcement. <laughs> you don't think? <laughs> Okay. I, I might eat my words, but I feel in 2017 uh, they wouldn't do that. I feel like we're due one per decade, okay? We had the hand in, in the 90s. We had the uh, Lita and Snitsky. Oh, we had a few during that era. There was Terry, did the miscarriage angle. Okay. I they think, did some horrible, I mean, horrible angles. I think we're due, quite frankly. Pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jordan comes out and defends Kurt, his dad. And he wants Dallas and Axel to be inserted into the match so there are no excuses when he wins tonight. And then they fight with the Miz Taraj being sent to the floor to end our segment. And then we went backstage after the break, and Jordan is all upset. Kurt tells him to calm down. You've got to focus on your match. Jordan says he hears all the whispers and the looks he receives backstage because he's Angle's son. Angle says, you've got to step up or go home. Sometimes it takes more strength not to fight back. That's my blood coursing through your veins. And you can shut them all up by winning the Intercontinental title from The Miz. Gee, thanks, Dad. Yeah, there really is no impartiality demonstrated here on the part of Kurt Angle, is there? There. Jason Jordan is also playing a 10-year-old, by the way. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's 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 hardly a new storyline we've seen in pro wrestling, right? Nepotism? Yeah, not at all. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, But it's... Do you think it's working? No. No, I don't think it's working. I I thought they were doing some things with Jordan the last few weeks with with Cena and Reigns. What's getting him over is his wrestling. You know, I I feel almost all this stuff is kind of holding What's not is this stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like every time they appear and they try to sell it, the audience just clearly doesn't buy it. And so the more they try to force it on you, the more it feels like they're trying to lie to you. You've got a guy who's a good athlete who does a great comeback, but... As soon as the audience like realizes that and they get into that, the, the athletic side of this guy, the mm-hmm. upside, it's like they get hit over the head with a hammer that this angle still exists. Yeah. And it is just like go away heat when they go into this. Because mm-hmm. I don't think it's, it's a totally unbelievable angle. Yeah. Pardon the pun. That is what Jason Jordan is, an unbelievable, unbelievable angle. angle. Wow, damn. You're on fire today. Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax, after last week's big buildup, what a, what a match we had. Jax is getting the better of Alexa, who then walks up the aisle to tease leaving when Sasha comes out and causes her to run back down the aisle and runs right into Nia Jax, who's on the aisle. They go through the break, and Jax catches Alexa Bliss with a Samoan drop and wins. Did I miss anything? Um, that was a match. That was it, I guess. You're right. He wins the, she wins the momentum. Yes, yeah, yeah, we had lots of momentum at stake on Monday. Uh-huh. 
Sasha jumps Nia Jax from behind, who got tossed off, and then Bailey comes out in San Jose. Mm -hmm. Remember her? She joins Bliss and Banks to take out Jax. The other three are left in the ring, and then Banks attacks Bliss, and Bailey hits the Bailey to Belly, and plays Bailey's music, and she has been added to the No Mercy match. It is now a fatal five way. Yeah, Emma was not around because they mentioned that she had stayed and decided to stay in. Australia for a few days. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, so she missed Raw as a result. She missed the go-home show, but Because yeah, she decided to go, go home. home. <laughs> yeah, she had her own go-home show. Uh, well, um, you know, in the match, I, I, found, I found it interesting because you had uh, essentially what was a double heel thing, and in the, the way they played it out, it really turned in Naya into a baby face uh, by putting her up against the bigger heel, Alexa Bliss. And I think it's tricky playing a smaller heel against a bigger baby face, a monster baby face. But I thought they managed somewhat here. Um, and then I guess this, the point of the match was to show you that Naya could lose if the other three team together. Um, and it'll also show you that I guess Alexa could lose if nobody t- even teams together. Wait, you forgot the biggest point as of a result of this new booking. Now... Only a 20% chance for each woman to oh, win. Oh, wow. Their odds yeah. just went down with the insertion mm-hmm. of a woman. Yeah. That's how math works. Man, this is just going to be a scramble on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. Uh, they showed a series of uh, tribute posts from various talent and performers. And then the awkward segue of the night was Michael Cole stating, well, if Bobby Heenan were at ringside this Sunday, he might say it's a dog-eat-dog world and Brock Lesnar is Braun Strowman's milk bone. Bobby Heenan would not have said that line <laughs> at his worst in WCW. <laughs> I didn't. Know. I don't know how some of this stuff comes out of Michael Cole's mouth. I didn't programmed know. or not. Like I didn't know this that. was such an awkward, unfunny, <laughs> non-human well, <laughs> response. I didn't know if that was to some, a tribute. I didn't know if that was some type of reference that to, to maybe something Heenan famously said in the past that I probably wasn't aware of, or, or maybe it was even something that was a bit of an insider thing, but it was a very awkward <laughs> sentence. What was? What did he say? He said, it might be a dog-eat-dog world, and Brock Lesnar is Braun Strowman's milk bone. <laughs> I don't recall Bobby Heenan <laughs> saying anything close to that in my life, and if he did, I'm sure it would be much wittier <laughs> and better delivered than that was. Has any other human being outside of like a vet said that particular sentence? Way it's a real dog eat dog world out there, and <laughs> Phil is gonna be Fred's milk bone. <laughs> yeah, good one. Are you drunk? <laughs> is milk bone like the the chewable like like the dog treat? Is that I what think that so. Is? Yes. <laughs> what a way to describe. Thanks, Michael Cole. Great, great being. tribute to uh, up here. <laughs> Brock uh, had a feature, uh, a Strowman and Lesnar feature. This featured Paul Heyman comments from two thousand and two. Mm-hmm. Anytime they, like, show, bring up footage from the past, you've already got me hooked. <laughs> Old stuff. Yeah. There was a lot of that I for know, the features show. tonight. Yeah. I liked it. Uh, more, more so later than this one. This was kind of mm-hmm. just for whatever reason they had a poor intern dig up these Paul Heyman comments for whatever reason. It's like, that oh, it's cool. Met more in 2002 yeah, it's, it's than they cool. did now. It's cool to go back to old footage. Uh, this just showed comparisons of the two with Lesnar superplexing the big show 14 years ago and Strowman doing it this year. Mm-hmm. There was this great slow motion sequence of Strowman popping up from the German suplex that looked really great. Newsflash, the WWE production videos are just awesome i mean they especially needed them this week without cena nor lesnar there so um lesnar i guess was kind of kind of there but not really uh so they, he was there for about nine words that plus the bobby heaton package so you know like you really kind of need the uh, production staff to work overtime michael cole plugged a sit-down interview with braun and brock for later tonight seamus and cesaro came out and they state that they destroy nostalgia acts. Just ask the Hardys. By the way, I, I heard from a total of three people who said over the past week that Seamus and Cesaro are actually their favorite team. I bet they all lied, too. They were just trying to be, be, make a counterpoint. Three people. Yeah, that's great. Three people. They run down Rollins and Ambrose and said their friendship is a fraud. They're just using each other for their own selfish needs. 
The crowd started chanting what? So Cesaro just repeated the line over and over again like he was encouraging it by mocking. I know. This didn't really work. These damn chants. It's like how much time is spent by some of these performers thinking how I'm going to be the one these to are, destroy them. These chants are 16 years old. Okay, they That's debuted, crazy, they dude. They debuted shortly after WrestleMania. <laughs> these set. chants can drive. Oh, they, <laughs> exactly. They, they, they're about to graduate high school, these chants. Oh, um, it's Christian's fault. Is it his fault? He did. He was the one that did this on his answering machine, and Austin started doing it. Oh, I guess so. Okay, sure. But you're right. Austin deserves the lion's share of the blame. Yeah. Anyway, still the greatest is Hulk Hogan's. <laughs> his combat, which I've yeah. told this story many a time, but Hulk Hogan, in his infinite wisdom, thought when he came back to the WWE in 2002, mm-hmm. he had the ultimate shutdown for the what chance? Because, you know, he used to have a catchphrase that incorporated right. the word what? So when the fans started chanting what, he would pick it up mid-sentence and end it with, what you gonna do? What? What you gonna do? <laughs> and this is my favorite Hulk Hogan moment ever, <laughs> was this man with what he thought was the most genius idea, he, and he just fell flat on his face yeah. trying to combat these chants. Sure, he was very proud of himself <laughs> for those ones. Oh, watching him struggle was just, it was joyous. Well, I'll say... <laughs> Maybe, Maybe more clever than this. That might have been better than this. Uh, I just don't think these two are really strong enough to, to shut down that chant. Yep. Uh, the truth will take over on Sunday. They even brought up the fact that nostalgia will fade away just like these what chants, and they stay together through the good, bad, and for this segment, the ugly times. Rollins and Ambrose came out, and Rollins called Sheamus the taxi driver. So these, line, these guys didn't do that much better either than Sheamus and Cesaro. They're, they, he was trying to say that the two of them look like taxi driver and Braveheart had a really ugly baby. So Ambrose says a real brother would never let another brother leave the house dressed like Seamus and Cesaro. Anderson and Gallows came out, and they called out Seamus and Cesaro for walking out on them. And then Seth and Dean took advantage of that last week and led to them being called nerds, which upset Ambrose greatly as he said, nobody calls me a nerd. And they all brawled, as Cole says, it's like Revenge of the Nerds. Mm. I've never had a match setup that I, I felt like just fast forwarding through and letting you recap. It was. Uh, this segment did so much to kill my interest in anything involving these six. The banter was definitely not very good. Um, they don't really have. I if, mean, if I guess. Bobby Heenan was sitting <laughs> ringside for this, he would have got up and left. Uh, but the storyline is, uh, I guess, about uh, what which sets of brothers are, are real brothers, you know? <laughs> the answer is none of them. Yeah, none of them, <laughs> right. But uh, that's the story they're trying to, t- to tell. And I've, I kind of feel like there's something there, but I think without this type of banter uh, would, would help people maybe take it a bit more seriously. So we, the, sorry, go ahead. That's it. We had a three-way setup as a result with the three teams. Three-way, and uh, we're told that Cesaro and Sheamus are now officially known as The Bar. Oh, great. Yeah. So we have The Club versus The Bar. Versus The Shield. Versus The Shield. The Shield. Yeah. Not the full shield. It's like a modern uh, rock, paper, scissors. Cole promotes the sit-down with Lesnar and Strowman, and Corey Graves reminds Cole of what Lesnar did to Cole the last time the two were in this building, which was the night after WrestleMania 31, and Booker starts laughing at this where Cole was destroyed, and then Cole reminds Booker that he was also attacked during this angle, and Booker's laughter just quietly dissipated. <laughs> like, ah, ha, ha. Oh, yeah. That was, a, right, right. that was a rough one. He had no recollection of this. Cesaro caught Ambrose off the apron, grabs him by the legs, and swings him into the barricade. They had the advantage on Ambrose for a long time. Then they had the advantage on Rollins for a long time. There was a sunset flip into a buckle bomb by Rollins to Cesaro, Anderson caught the leg of Rollins, and then there was a super kick by Gallows. They hit the magic killer, and Ambrose saved, went through a commercial. Cesaro uh, lifted up Rollins, who spun off his shoulders into a DDT, tagged in Ambrose, and hit a superplex to Anderson. Rollins did a monkey flip, sending Cesaro over the top to the floor. And then Rollins and Ambrose hit suicide dives to opposite sides of the ring, came back in the ring, and then went to the other side and delivered another suicide Mm -hmm. dive. Uh, They were doing a lot more tag team 
uh, tactics in this match, Rollins and Ambrose. Yep. Sheamus did a blind tag as Ambrose did the lunatic lariat. Anderson got hit with the dirty deeds, and then Sheamus entered. Are you okay? Yeah, I fucking pinch my, my own finger. Oh, boy, sorry. But it's oh. okay. I'm Are you okay? Right. I'm fine, yeah. Uh, Sheamus entered, tossed Ambrose to the floor, and stole the pin on Anderson. <sighs> yeah, I'm good. Anderson and Gallows were in their regular position of losing. And we've yeah. got a straight tag team match on Sunday. Okay, yes, yes. I thought it was a very good TV match. It, uh, by the end, it got it got good. Yeah, really fast pace, particularly whenever Rollins and Ambrose were in. And I think they're both continuing to be a, a lot of fun to watch as baby faces. And, I mean, I thought the, the match, the entertainment value of the match lar- largely relied on. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw a clip of a... Usain Bolt being run over by a Segway. I just uh, I laugh every time I see that clip. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> these two uh, they're 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 great wrestling as a babyface tag team, you know. And I have no doubt the match itself on on Sunday will be a lot of fun too. Fine TV match, lengthy, but the the story's not really there, you know. It's it's six guys having wrestling matches. Yeah. The Miz was in the locker room. Miz says tonight that they have a chance to silence the critics and Angle will realize he's ten times the father that he is. Uh, Dallas says, is that possible for the Miz to be ten times the father of Kurt Angle? Well, he He's not he's technically not, a father yet. He hasn't even has his wife give birth yet. So. He can't be one time the father Kurt is. I don't yet. even know how you would measure that. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know how Kurt is as a father either. Dallas says that the inspirational speech should be about them. Dallas and Axel each talk about their fathers, and Axel won't take it easy on The Miz, and Dallas says he's going to steal the show with The Miz, and Miz is telling them not to get ahead of themselves. I like the side storyline with uh, Axel and and, uh, Dallas here. I mean, I thought, I think, you know, okay, you have Axel and and Bo who are just kind of the lackeys of... uh, of, uh, of Miz, who are supposed to stand in the way of Jason Jordan, but they managed to find justifiable reason why Axel and Bo would be jealous of Jason Jordan, and the, that being the fact that they're being overlooked, uh, even though they themselves come from, you know, pedigrees in professional wrestling. So I thought it all worked out pretty well. We had one of our fun sponsors. This one was Pizza Hut, which, when you think Pizza Hut, you think of Money in the Bank from WrestleMania 21. I mean, I could see a great cross promotion with briefcases instead of pizza boxes. What if you got um, like something, one of Jim Hurd's awful creations, because he had been a executive at Pizza Hut before he oh, took over okay. uh, WCW. Yeah. You could have had uh, the Ding Dongs or something. Maybe that could have been our Pizza Hut tie-in. I just, uh, I just wonder how they come up with these. Like, oh, well, you have a briefcase and you have a pizza box that opens up with money. I guess the pi- the pizza being the the money inside the briefcase. <laughs> All right. Well, Michael Cole came out of this by stating that was one of the biggest moments in Edge's career, and this Sunday could be one of Roman Reigns. Yeah. Has there been a bigger pizza angle in pro wrestling? I'm sure there has been. Right? Um. I don't know. It'll come to us. Oh, okay. Something involving an actual physical pizza. Yeah. Cena and Reigns feature. This was cool. They had. They started it off with OVW footage, which immediately you must have been a fan of. Hooked. Old. Yeah. OVW. Old yeah. footage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they compared it to Roman Reigns uh, from 2012 in NXT. Yeah. Post. Like he started two years earlier he at the time. FCW. So his his Liaki run is yeah inv- invisible. Yeah. But Roman Reigns began in 2012 in mm-hmm. NXT, uh, each winning the U.S. title, each winning the Royal Rumble, winning world titles, Cena becoming a 16-time champion, Reigns beating The Undertaker at WrestleMania, and then into the promos over the last month. Mm-hmm. So, fine feature. I thought really good, you know, compiling the best lines from their verbal battle over the past several weeks. and These even- promos worked much better in edited form. Yeah, I mean, the first week I thought it was still great. And some of the subsequent weeks I think were still strong too. But condensed together in, in a package like this, I thought it was really done well. I was surprised. I mean, I guess I'm not surprised, but they, they even include the, the drug test line in this. Um, if you s- look at the promo itself, like they, they've been airing like promos on like the pay-per-view channels and, 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 and whatnot in the build-up to this match. There were certain lines that they didn't use uh, in in that in those kind of mainstream market uh packages and I also found like that 
the mainstream packages to kind of favor Reigns a little bit more than, you know, have Cena appear to be, like, the, the, the dominant one. Maybe they saw the, the commercial for Daniel Cormier versus John Jones and using his drug test, and they were like, wait a minute. We got, we got a top guy who failed yeah. the drug test. This is great. Uh, How yeah. do we work this in? I mean, that could be a future storyline. Maybe uh, that promo blew away the Cena Reigns stuff. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, that was real, you know. But what if, like, Reigns beats Cena and then test positive? Oh, it fails to test yeah. after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No title involved, but, hey, it's an idea they could go with. Yes. For sure. And then he's got to face a multiple-year drug suspension. Mm. Angle is on the phone. Goldust has his back to the camera in his office and turns around, and he does not have face paint on. He wants a second chance against Bray Wyatt. I'm asking you as Dustin Rhodes. And he says that they've known each other for 20 years, and he isn't a pawn in Bray's game against Finn Balor. He wants to prove this. Angle relents. Tonight, he says Bray will never forget the name of Dustin Rhodes. So we have gone back to 1998, Dustin Rhodes. Yeah. When he uh, denounced the Gold Dust character. Mm. And he was uh, just Dustin Rhodes. 20 years, you know? Yeah, you know. Val Venus, Bray Wyatt. Yeah. He, you know, Gold, uh, Gold Dust, Dustin Rhodes definitely looks older than the last time I feel like I've seen him without. He actually, does. I saw, I saw him at the Dustin Ro uh, Dusty Classic without paint. But in the outfit? <laughs> in the outfit. He looks very he silly. He looks older, but he doesn't look as old as, no, no, as no. I expect. You know what I mean? Like, if you're telling me Dustin Rhodes, the dude that I saw at WCW in 1992, is also this guy who's wrestling in 2017, I'm like, wow, he actually looks pretty good for his age, in my opinion. You know, at least in his shape is is ridiculous, you know, considering how much his face has aged. Maybe. Maybe he will get taken under Bray's uh, powers and will get a return to Black Rain, who has come to unseat Roman. They don't own that, though. <laughs> that would they'd have to bargain for that one with, with Ed. <laughs> Really? They'd have to work out a deal yeah. for, for the Black Rain IP, <laughs> yeah. the ever-desirable yeah. uh, Black Rain yeah. intellectual property. Yeah, you guys, I mean, we don't really want the Hardy stuff anymore, but uh, we want to talk to you about this other gimmick we want. <laughs> They'd be like, what? They do own like Prince, <laughs> but Black? Black Rain. They do own Seven, though. They could, they could always use Seven, yeah, use yes, seven. if that was protected over yeah. all these years. Kurt Hawkins is in the ring. He is closing the Star Factory, and in its place is the Kurt Hawkins history machine, because tonight the audience will witness history. It will be the end of his 114-match losing streak, because he's healthy now, and his opponent will be a footnote in history and the answer to a trivia question. Mm -hmm. I was bored, so I looked this up. Oh, his actual streak? His last recorded victory mm -hmm. was November the 8th of last year, mm -hmm. over... Apollo Crews. Is that right? And since that time, he has lost 92 matches in a row. So where did the or not been the not had his arm raised? So where did the extra ones come from? Well, maybe there maybe it wasn't a part, uh, complete record. Oh, okay. But he's not that far off. No, it's close enough. Yeah, it's close enough. Yeah. Kurt Hawkins and Apollo Crews had their match with Crews answering the challenge. Uh, there was a standing moonsault with Hawkins getting his knees up, and then Hawkins briefly had the advantage, landed a spine buster, O'Connor roll for two, then Cruz landed an Insiguri and the spinning sit-out powerbomb, won the match in 218, so Hawkins has now lost 115 matches in a row, according to the storyline. What, what's the deal with Apollo Cruz? No deal. Yeah. Barely hanging on to one. He's just like, he was brought over to Raw. Am I right? I don't even. He remember. was he was first brought to SmackDown, yeah. and then moved to Raw. Moved to Raw, with the I think the idea of him finally getting some type of storyline, some some type of push. But I don't know if he had he's had anything since he's moved to Raw. It it actually hasn't helped him at all. He's he was doing probably better on SmackDown. At least he had Talking Smack on SmackDown. Yeah, he's just. I I think this guy's been. Uh, just a total screw-up since he was called up to the main roster. 
I mean, the Titus brand stuff, I feel like maybe is there's definitely some potential. It seems like they... The I think three... they're done with it already. It's, yeah, it's hardly the priority it was when Tozawa was in that title program. It seems like the three of them have some type of chemistry, and I would love to see a tag team with Titus and, and Akira Tozawa. Sure. With, sorry, with Titus as the manager. With and with Apollo. Cruz and Tozawa. Yeah. They'd be a great team together. Mm. Michael Cole does his fake satellite interview with Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. Lesnar is asked about being the underdog, and Heyman points out he was also the underdog against The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30. Braun will be beaten, victimized, and conquered. Braun says his actions speak for his words, but then goes on to explain why he is so confident. Heyman acknowledges that Strowman is the most capable challenger that Lesnar's ever faced and puts over the fact that Braun stood up from the German suplex next week. And then Lesnar cuts off Heyman, thanks Braun for backing him into this corner because it's where he performs best, and stares into the camera and says, Suplex City, bitch. And they are billing this as the most anticipated universal title match ever. Ever. They, I mean, they, did they say that, or did they just call it the biggest universal title match ever? Did they say anticipated? I think most anticipated. Oh, okay. 13 months. I, I mean, that's just you can, a, it's it's a, justifiable. It's a realistic yeah. title match. I'm looking forward to this match a lot. Me too. Uh, so yeah, they they did this. I guess I'm supposed uh, last week, right? Because yes, Lesnar wasn't here. So yeah, it was good, good serious stuff. Then Roman came out. Uh, he said John Cena may be the best talker ever, but sometimes he says stupid shit. And he mocks Cena's look, and says he doesn't want to be the next John Cena, looking exactly like him because he wouldn't have a career here. Just ask Alex Riley. Which that's it sounded like one of those. The, the Eric Bischoff, Sid Vicious line about the scissors. That this totally went over everyone's head. People know who Alex Riley is. Yeah, but I don't think they got this at all. I think so. I don't think anyone is aware of the Cena-Alex Riley issues. Oh, I didn't even know the issue. What, what's there, the issue? I, I mean, Alex Riley has oh, alluded they, to that there was... a lot alike? Uh, that's what Reigns insinuated here. You, they had some issue between the two of them. You don't them. even have to know anything about that. It's just simply the fact that, okay, here's here's a guy who kind of look has the same look as John Cena. That's that's what he's saying. Well. You want to know what Alex Riley... Oh, what did he say? He says, I'm on Netflix now. I don't care. I mean, he didn't really say anything. In re- like He wrote this. He says, you're starting to see dot, dot, dot. Oh, you're starting to see? Okay. I don't, I don't know what that means. Well, Alex Riley was over for a minute in 2011, yeah. and then they stopped with him. Okay. Promo continued. He, ca- he says he called Cena a fake-ass bitch because he is, and he's also the biggest hypocrite to ever step into a WWE ring, which just isn't true. And, and more old footage. Oh, they pulled up footage yeah. from February of 2012. And yeah. it's John Cena looking younger. Looking What? Really? I, I thought he looked... He looked the same to me. I thought he looked a bit younger in this clip. I mean, it was five years ago. Five and a half years ago. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that long. He's running down the rock for not being around like he said he would. And always running back to Hollywood. And Cena states he'll always be here. So Rain says, should we bring out John Cena? And he milked it. And the crowd was cheering and said, well, that's not possible because John is not here. That selfish prick is off where he learned another language wrestling in China for us. Is that where he is tonight? He was doing the show Sunday in China. And how about, like, is he, was he doing that tonight or, or was it other, other obligations? I think he was in flying back. I mean, uh, right. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> that's where he was this weekend. I mean, yeah. he was, anyway, he says the result is going to be the same as WrestleMania 28, but Cena is going to be beaten by a different Samoan. And we will see Cena on Sunday, movie star, and flip the mic just as Cena did in the 2012 promo. Mm-hmm. Very good use of yeah. your own footage. And, yeah, I think any time you can use old stuff, old match results, old promos, I think it's always great. It makes the point stronger, you know. And I thought this was Reigns. Pro- this, was, this was like uh, Reigns' biggest kind of uh, hand, you know, that he, that he had in this uh, feud with Cena. The, and he did it in a week where he was uncon- uncontested with Cena not being around. I thought this was a good week for Cena not to be there. 
And I liked having Reigns sure. just do the solo promo. Because I feel like the, the, the arguments have been quite lopsided in Cena's favor. And so to have Reigns at least end off on a really strong note helps kind of maybe add some balance. It's like Donald Trump. He didn't do so well in the debates, but he goes to his campaign rallies. That's where he shined with his base. Hmm. It's like right. Roman Reigns. There you go. Wow, what a comparison. Renee is with the Hardys backstage. And they state they've been fighting since they were children, and it made them stronger. Jeff says he's going to seize the moment at No Mercy, and Matt says, well, you got to make it to No Mercy first. So Jeff says, may the best Hardy win. And then they, they put up their knuckles together like they were a pair of chipmunks that had just found a nut together. I wasn't sure what he was doing. Like, I didn't know if this was like, oh, was this like part of the Broken Hardy's carrot thing I didn't realize? Does he have broken fingers? Like, is it, <laughs> is it, are his joints all out of whack? But no, this is their new thing. It's just like. Everybody's got a like you don't you understand like hand 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 signatures are like a big thing now. You can probably make a lot of money. Like, dude, t- too sweet is like the young bucks are, are killing it off of this. They didn't even create this. So like I'm sure everybody wants to make their own and Matt thinks this is it. This is their new their new too sweet. All right. Cool. Maybe it'll take off. Maybe yeah. fans will be doing this all over the world. We got another Asuka promo. There had been one earlier. This featured a quote from Sun Tzu. Be extremely mysterious, even to the point of soundlessness. Thereby, you can be the director of the opponent's fate. So these are... I think they're, they're so cool. These promos, like you can tell the promos where they're invested in a character are not. Yeah. And these are clearly ones where they yeah. see Asuka as a big deal. Oh, as opposed to the Kurt Hawkins uh, vignettes? Slightly, yeah. yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bray Wyatt versus Dustin Rhodes, a precursor to our man versus man showdown on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Rhodes hit him with a clothesline. Actually, Bray- so th- shouldn't that mean Bray should appear as Wyndham? Is that his name? Yeah, maybe as Husky Harris on Sunday. Yeah. There was a chant for Dustin. He whipped Bray into the steps and he flew over. Rhodes attacked him with strikes, but then Bray got a headbutt in. Rhodes then set him up in the corner, hit Shattered D- Dreams twice, which Graves noted was to the inner thigh. Yes. That's kind of right. killing this, the, the whole. Have, re- you, have you ever been kicked in the inner thigh? I'm sure it's not pleasant. I bet it's not, but I guess. Yeah. What <laughs> are my shattered dreams located in my thigh? Uh, I guess not. But you can claim that you're aiming. What for is you. shattered in you your can, thigh? Okay, in MMA, if you aim for somebody's inside leg, and if you happen to accidentally hit the testicles, you can claim innocence. Maybe that's sort of the thinking here. Well, he hit him twice, and then Rhodes just bounced off the ropes and got hit with Sister Abigail, and Bray won in 234, and that was it. I guess Dustin Rhodes did not redeem himself, and he is a pawn in Bray's elaborate scheme. So where does he go? Where does Dustin Rhodes go from here? Where does Goldust go from here? You know, Does he just put the paint back on? Um, does he turn heel? I, don't, I wouldn't mind the idea of him joining a Bray Wyatt. I don't think they have any plans for him. Yeah. I feel he's just going to be a guy that what shows do you think up the, What do you think the original idea was, was supposed to be for his uh, uh, this thing, this storyline that he, they dropped? Uh, it, was, it was so – it was one promo that it, there was – I have no idea. But I think I a lot no of people – like, at least like a lot of people seem to think that it might have been leading towards like a Mandy Rose, you know, being uh, kind of a gold dust new protege. Maybe they're going in a different direction. I wouldn't mind – Gold Dust becoming this this evil mastermind to teach Bray, like Bray needs something. You know what I mean? Definitely, and I think Gold. I don't hate that idea, like a more twisted version of yeah, Gold Dust like a like Bray. a dark, demonic version. Yeah, Could work. and he can bring out his Gold Dust outfit and light it on fire, like he did in 1998 when he denounced it. Sure. Finn Balor appears on the screen. He wants to tell Bray a story about a shy boy who read about monsters. Eventually, this boy became a man and discovered how to control the pain and rage from within, just like the gods he read about in the mythology books. And he says, if the demon is a creation of the man, which one is more dangerous? And no mercy, you're going to find out. And Bray laughed, and Cole reminds us, on Sunday, it's man versus man. I like the promo from Finn. I mean, the tags are kind of, like, silly. Man versus man does sound r- rather silly. But, like, the storyline, I understand. And I thought it was a well-scripted promo. and Decently delivered from, from Finn Balor. I mean, 
they it's it's so awkward trying to go from the demon match to the regular non-paint match, right? But I mean, his promo here seemed to somewhat justify it. The man who created the demon be more dangerous, <laughs> even though the guy who <laughs> created the demon he lost to Bray Wyatt in the in the week before, <laughs> like the 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 SummerSlam match. If Bray loses this match, <laughs> I mean, what a what a just a character to just kill off at this point. I don't know. I don't know about that. They 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 could still do a House of Horrors with this feud oh, to end it. God, maybe the house goes they, up in flames and that's yeah. the end of Bray. Who won the SummerSlam match? Was it Finn? Finn, Finn right? It's the demon. I could see Bray winning this one and then doing a third in a gimmick. Oh, oh God. No. Don't what keep, else can you do with Bray Wyatt outside? I'm not in this feud at all. I I don't need to see it continue. Well, what would you move Bray Wyatt towards? Cause, NXT. I mean, <laughs> let let him go there. Those those 400 fans will love his promos every week. I'm done with him. Mm. Oh, um, we had more more tributes for Heenan, and then Michael Cole mentions Heenan calling Raw during the first year the show was on the air, referred to Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan as the greatest broadcast team in WWF history. Booker says he was the best commentator to ever call his matches and then laughed at Michael Cole. And that's when we got the tribute video for Heenan, which is very nice. And tons of great clips with him and Gorilla who were just, they were just awesome working mm-hmm. off one yeah. another. Enzo comes out. He states he's going to knock the gargoyle Neville off of his perch and gets interrupted by Braun who runs him over like a Mack truck. Enzo is dead. The crowd feeling awful for this poor man, start chanting, thank you, Strowman. He throws Enzo into the ring, hits him with a choke slam and a power slam. This is our go-home angle for Neville and Enzo. Yeah. Our big title match on Sunday. The least anticipated cruiserweight title match ever, as I'm calling it. Neville comes out, sneaks past Braun, and hits Enzo with a red arrow, and then asks, how you doing, to Enzo on the microphone. This Enzo booking is just baffling. I, the booking, I think, is predominantly guided by um, their their probably mandate to just make this guy uh, to humiliate this guy, basically, you know, on TV, uh, or to lower his stock quit. or his value just quit. for whatever reason. <laughs> um, and you know, I, but I thought they managed to somewhat salvage it. Like, they got everything they wanted out of this. They humiliated Enzo on live TV, but they still gave Neville the heat afterwards by him. Neville have all the heat going into that. I mean, Enzo is such a but I mean, in this non-credible segment. challenger here. I mean, it, yeah. it would hurt Neville to have to go 50-50 with this guy. Right. But ha- by having Neville come out here and d- to deliver the final blow to Enzo kind of makes him ultimately... You, you, you kind of can see why Enzo would be ultimately more mad at him than even Braun Strowman. That's, right? for any other angle, absolutely. But Enzo, like, you cannot get behind this guy. They've no, given no. you so little well, faith. The, the crowd's already turned on him. The, the, there's, him. Yeah, there's no babyface comeback to cheer for or get behind. I just think they've done a masterful job of destroying this guy. Him winning on Sunday would feel really awkward and... Mm, I don't know. Not a, not something I don't think anybody even wants to see. And he's the top baby face in the cruiserweight division. Yeah. Charlie interviewed him after the break. He's being iced, and he says he's taking Neville's title at no mercy. He might win. There was also zero follow-up to his attack from the Miztourage last week after they just destroyed him. He's just him. the guy who gets beaten up. <laughs> he doesn't worry about revenge. Oh. He's like, uh, I lost he's, that one. He's, Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Neville and Grand Metal League had a match. Graves flat out says Enzo has no chance at winning on Sunday. Neville's in control, tears the mask of Grand Metal League. Yeah, like to a great extent, to the to the point where, I mean, I feel like I pr- pretty much know what this guy looks like, you know? Yeah, maybe this was uh, this would have been better served on the CMLL show on Saturday. Uh, yeah, yeah, something tells me that they probably ripped a little too too hard well, for this. Well, uh, this caused Metalik to fire back, made a comeback with a springboard drop kick, did a springboard somersault dive to the floor, and then went for a moonsault with Neville getting his feet up and applying the rings of Saturn, which was credited to Perry Saturn mm-hmm. in three yeah. minutes and 19 seconds. And Neville wins going into Sunday, looking strong as hell. Yeah. So, wow, what a great build. 
It's Hispanic Heritage Month. Do you know what that means for the WWE audience? You tear Luchador's mask off. <laughs> yes, and yeah. we honor Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. So we got a great feature. This on. was unusual. Like, what is this? It's just like, okay, here are the most famous Hispanic people in America. This was more random than our Money in the Bank match from 12 years ago. Are they trying to get JLo to come in to do something? Uh, she's going to come in for the mask versus hair match between Neville and Grand Metalik. Whoa. Uh, I'd watch that. Okay. Sure. Um, like JLo's hair is on the line? Oh, no. I meant Neville's. Oh. oh but I sure, see. yeah. Jennifer <laughs> Lopez could get involved too. Okay. Elias is in the ring for his song. He calls Jason Jordan a daddy's boy who will become a failure just like everyone in San Jose. He goes to continue the song, but he gets cut off by the Hardys. And we have our six-pack challenge main event. Final s- segment of the show with Elias, the Hardys, Bo Dallas, Curtis Axel, and Jason Jordan. The winner will face The Miz on Sunday, and The Miz is seated ringside. Was there football this week? Oh, yeah, definitely. Fo- there's and, football every week now. And, and so did you see any kind of, like, placement of matches or events on this card or on this tonight's show? Well, that- unlike this week, there was no double header, so you didn't have that small time in between games. I mean— oh. The game started at like 8.30, I think. So, I mean, they were just, they were facing the game all night. Um, Anyway, Elias leaped to the top and then got shoved to the floor by Dallas and Axel. And the announcers were so blown away by this man in his jeans jumping to the top like Shelton Benjamin. There was a Tower of Doom spot with Jordan taking the superplex. Jeff hit a poetry in motion and then grabbed his arm after landing and then got rolled up by Matt with the save being made. Matt then got run shoulder first into the post into the floor. Jordan did his big fire up with the straps coming down, a running spear to Axel in the corner. Miz then takes Jordan and runs him into the barricade, which they explain it's a no DQ and a six pack challenge. Matt hits a twist of fate to Dallas. Elias makes the save. Drift away is hit to Matt and Jeff returns. Then Jeff hit the twist of fate to Axel. He climbs to the top and Jeff leaped off with the swanton and crushed Curtis Axel. He landed on top of Axel with all of his body weight, it seemed. Like, he looked like he sandbagged Axel upon landing. I rewound this and felt for Curtis Axel here. Is that something he could have controlled in midair? I mean, Jeff, ever since coming back, it seems like the swanton, he just lets the guy take all of his weight. Like, he is not dispersing it on the ring when he does the swanton. He's not and, uh, landing with the, the bridge of his neck. He just lands on top of the guy. And this one just looked brutal. I've never done a swanton. Well, if you watch this, I don't think Axel ever wants to take one again. Um, he was just dead. Jordan came from behind as Curtis Axel was up, lifted him into the neckbreaker finish, and Jordan got the victory. So it's Jordan mm-hmm. and The Miz on Sunday. Yeah, I thought they told Jason Jordan's story pretty well throughout this episode, um, and I thought he's looking he, hes looking very good in ring. You know, they're giving him a lot of suplexes. They're giving him Taz, Taz's gimmick. They're letting him suplex everybody, and I think he's been able to pick up a lot of steam that way. Imagine if Taz had been introduced as Kurt's son. Um, that's a bit tougher to buy. At the Royal Rumble, especially Kurt Angle comes out, and then in the garden, his son debuts. Especially considering Taz might be actually older than Kurt Angle. Um, they might be neck and neck with age. Yeah, yeah. Who anyway. cares? It'd be as believable as this one. Sure, sure. But uh, I think they're doing a good job with Jason Jordan, but it's just a real struggle with this gimmick. You know what I mean? Like, the crowd just does not buy this gimmick. You're, you're, you're trying too hard to push something that I don't think really will ever work, uh, unless they turn him heel. So, eh, we'll see. The Miz entered the ring. Jordan hit him with a pair of belly-to-belly suplexes, and an Axel and Dallas jumped him. They got the advantage. Miz hit a skull-crushing finale and ended the show by stating that after No Mercy, he'll still be the champ, Kurt Angle will still be a terrible father, and you will still be a bastard. Mm-hmm. Ouch. Boy. He's not a bastard. Third-hour raunch here. Yeah, like he knows who his father is now. Yeah. Okay, so what, what is a bastard? Like somebody who who's parents left you would n- you would not know your father i always took that to be the meaning of a bastard oh. <laughs> so he uh, was past tense he was yeah okay so yeah it works the, the line works yeah he sure, will al- he will always be a bastard yeah okay so that was the show yeah. um 
The video features might have been the high point of the show. This was a very yeah, passable were. Raw. Uh, by passable, I mean I could have just passed by it and not yeah. blinked. I agree with you. I the think Go Home Show was last week. The Go Home Show was certainly last week. But I feel like you need a week of video features. And you might as well have it be the Go Home Show, where you can actually spell out all the storyline that's are taking place in ring. And the all the video packages were very strong on this show. So yeah. go to YouTube, and you can get yourself all ready for No Mercy in 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, sir. We spent three hours. I feel like that's pretty much every week. Are you going to be watching No Mercy on yeah, Sunday? Definitely. Yeah, I am. There's also going to be a raw talk afterwards in case oh, right? uh, four hours isn't enough. I wouldn't say that about like a lot of other B shows, but they're treating a lot of their B shows like you know their their A shows essentially, and their A shows like their B shows. So well, I will be watching this one. Uh, what do you think happens with Lesnar and Strowman, and how um, long does it go? I don't see it being the only match these two will have. So uh, I can it goes it. on last. Oh, will it go last? Um, yeah, I, f- I feel yeah, it. Will. It's the title, and it's also like big. So yeah, uh, I think that'll go on last, and I feel like we're gonna get some type of screwy finish that'll lead to a rematch between the two. Um, so I guess it doesn't really matter who wins. And and how about Cena you? and Reigns. Cena and Reigns. Uh, I see John Cena losing that match. Me too. Yeah, I think Roman wins. Maybe even just. Completely clean, or they leave it somewhat subtle. I don't think it's going to be a run-in or anything like that. We'll Something it, to lead to a rematch we'll, down the road. We'll see him be back at Summer Sl- or Survivor Series. Do you think? Um, I don't know if he's uh, that, advertised or not. That obviously has a big effect on on the outcome of this match. Yeah, right? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we okay. will find out. Uh, so there you go. That was raw. Well, what was your favorite? moment of this show, John? Well, I'm going to have to take some time to think of my best and oh, my worst. And your worst. Um, the well, best uh, would have been... I think the Bobby Heenan video package was really great. Those are all very nice, very tasty. The worst was Michael Cole trying to... <laughs> the milk bone comment? To, uh, it wasn't offensive. It could have been a lot worse, okay? Uh, but it was bad. It, um, was, it was kind of shitty. Well, uh, those two are taken, so please don't say those. those cause, you can't. Uh, oh, you can't? Be okay. original. Be it's original. Be original. And let us know what you thought your best and worst moments of this particular episode of Raw was. Post them in the comments below of uh, below this particular YouTube video if you're watching us on YouTube. And you could win a free Pro Wrestling Tees t-shirt. We make a random draw every week. Please subscribe to us, post a comment, and Sam will look up your name and send you an email. Or actually send you a comment where you can send us an email. It's kind of confusing. All right. Well, for more, you can go to liveaudiowrestling.com. You can download the entire audio version where we will have the feedback. And we're also going to chat a bit about Bobby Heenan on the show. And then we're going to be back on Wednesday with Review of SmackDown, Post Headbutt. Post headbutt. Yeah, I wonder what the fallout will be from that. Also on Friday, oh very boy. special edition. Get, get excited. It is the eighth anniversary edition of Review Away. And what does that mean? If it's an anniversary show, that means we will be watching porn. No. No, I'm kidding. No, we've stopped <laughs> doing that. We will live watch a wrestling event and... We've gotten all your requests. We will consider all of them. you got to wait till Friday. But we will not announce them. You will not know what it is until Friday. Big might, surprise. Might be a weird one. Yeah. All right, so that's coming up Friday, the Review Away 8th anniversary show, which you can either download the audio version, you can watch it on YouTube. Way's got it all down pat, so you can watch said event with our live commentary. Sync it up and enjoy Have the Have a party. With us. It's Friday night. Yeah. What a better way than to listen to John and Way yeah. talk. Yeah. Yeah. Friday night, you probably aren't doing anything more important. Why not pick up two random dudes from Canada to watch wrestling with? Sounds like a date. Yeah. All right. LiveAudioWrestling.com is where you can go. Subscribe on iTunes. Go to YouTube.com slash LiveAudioWrestling. And anything else we do, follow it. 